Okay, it looks like the uh, GUI works, but I want to take this video uh, to show you how to do an encrypted home directory before we go into the GUI mode, uh, because there's a couple things you have to do to move things around. So I want to do that real quick. So right now we're um, logged in as root. I want to go to user home and notice we have the user John. He has a home directory. I haven't really logged in as him yet. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go here and we want to uh, want to move John to want to move that home directory. We want to make a new home directory. We want to make a new home directory for John, and we basically want to make sure it has the same permissions and users ownership as the other one. Now we got we want to install the uh, PEFS kernel module that allows us to do encrypted home directories, and that can be do, done by package install PEFS kmod. That's going to go out and pull that, and boom, that's in. Next thing we want to do is uh, in Linux ls mod is how you list modules. Uh, in in FreeBSD KLD stat shows you kernel modules that are loaded, and KLD load. Uh, is how you load kernel modules, and we want to load PEFs. And now if we do KLD stat, you can see that the kernel module PEFs is loaded. So now, the first thing we want to do is make sure that this kernel module loads every single time we start FreeBSD. So for that, we want to edit the loader.conf file under uh, boot. Um, and we want to add Pefs underscore load equals yes. You notice a common kind of format here. FreeBSD loves um, loves their underscore load underscore enable type commands. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to actually um, add a keychain in Pefs for that home directory. So what we want to do is run our user home, and we want to do Pefs. Add chain user home John. It's going to ask for a key phrase. Now it's important that this password is the same password as your user and not your root password. So we're going to enter that now. All right. So now inside John, we should have a PEFS DB file, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to back out of there. And the next thing we want to do is we want to mount, uh, we want to mount that folder. So what happens is, is once you encrypt the folder, everything inside the folder becomes encrypted. So you sort of have to mount it like you would a, uh, a drive. So we want to do PEFS mount slash user home John slash user home John. And that's really weird that you're mounting it on top of itself, but uh, trust me, that that's that's what you have to do. And then what you want to what you want to do is you want to do pefs add key, and this is the key that your user is going to use when he logs in automatically. And this will be the same as your user too. So um, so that's done. That phrase is added. So now. We have a key inside the keychain file so that when the, when the user John logs in, uh, the PAM module that handles login is going to check PEFs to see if it has the rights to unlock that folder. Uh, and it's important that we do that. So now what we want to do is we want to move the PEFs DB to temp. And then we want to umount slash user home John. We want to unmount that. And when you do that, that's basically like turning off the encryption. Uh, and then what we want to do now is we want to um, basically uh, move all the files that should be in his home directory uh, back. So what we want to do is. Um, now we want to move that database back. So we want to move slash temp dot pefs to slash user home john. So now 
That's what we want to see. Now, what we want to do is we want to mount that, that folder again. So we want to do pefs mount slash user home john slash user home john. Okay, so now the folder is mounted. Now at this point, we want to copy all the original stuff that was in the John's home folder to begin with. All of this, we want to move it in now that it's mounted and encrypted. So if you go to mount, you'll see that PEFS is there. It's good. So what we want to do is we want to uh, we want to move slash user home John one slash star to slash user home John. Really odd. Uh, all right, so it's saying it's a read-only file system. So that means that I actually have to actually add the key. So let's let's do that really quickly. So we're gonna do pefs add key slash user home John. I'm going to put the power now I should be able to do that again and uh, move everything over so there we go so now if I go ls dot slash John everything's there so that's exactly what I want and there's nothing in John one anymore right okay so now what we can do is we want to delete John one and we want to do a U mount. So now if you look at uh, John, you can see there's all the files. They're there. Now if I get out of this directory um, and I unmount it, and I go back into the directory, you'll see it's all encrypted. And uh, not only are the file names encrypted, but if I cat the file, the contents are encrypted as well. And it's AES128 uh, uh, encrypted. So um, basically, that's good. Now the home directory is ready to go. Now there's a couple things we need to do to get this to work. We need to buy the FS tab file. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to mount slash user slash home slash John to slash user slash home slash John. And the file system type is PEFS. Uh, and there you go. Now, once that's done, um, what we need to do is just check out, it's not mounted now. Let's just check that out. All right, so now it's ready to go, uh, but I don't have a key, so I won't be able to. Um, I won't be able to read it. See, because John's not logged in, but at least it's mounted and it's ready for John to log in. So the next thing we need to do is we need to edit Pam, and that's under etc pam .d, uh, system, and inside here there's a couple things we want to look at. So under the, under the auth section where it says auth um, sufficient, um, we're going to change this from pam ssh.so to pam underscore pefs.so. You don't have to change it. You can actually um, um, You could actually um, add a new line, but this is only a demonstration system. So, so what this is saying is, when you log in, unlock the drives, and when you log out, delete the key so it gets re-encrypted, right? Because the last thing you want to do is have the folder, you know, encrypt itself. Uh, leave it unencrypted once you log out. And the next one, we gotta go to the session. And the session, we're going to add optional 
Um, and this is going to be pam.pefs again. We're going to change that. Uh, and we're going to do this as um, Dell keys. Uh, and that is all we have to do to pam. Now, one of the things uh, that we need to do is uh, the PAM modules are under slash user local lib there it is PAM pefs.so and the normal PAM modules under slash user slash lib and you'll see that under here there's the rest of the PAM modules and by default, BSD is not going to look under user local. So we need to link that slash user um, lib pam underscore hefs dot so. We need to symlink that to user local lib slash pam dot hefs dot so. One second, uh, I got that order of that backwards. Uh, sorry, so we're going to symlink user local lib pam .so to user lib pam .so, and that way pam can find it. So now that that's done, the other thing we need to do, if you look at mount, is uh, pefs does not like um, the shortcuts. It doesn't like symlinks. You need to have slash user slash home slash John. So we need to edit the password file with bipw. Uh, bipw is a special tool to edit the password file. And we're going to go down and find John's home directory. Here he is. And you notice that his home directory is slash home slash John. That's actually a shortcut. So we need to change that to be slash user slash home slash John. And once we do that, we should be good to go. So, so once you're done here, the normal vi commands, and like I said, vi, vi, vi pw is a special command because you cannot edit the password file directly. It, it actually has to edit it in a certain way and then regenerate a database file. And so that's why you have to use that tool. So now that that's done, let's, um, let's go over to ttyv2. Let's try to log in as John. says I'm in my home directory. Ah, but look at that. It's not decrypting the files. So let's figure out why that's not working. Let's do pefs add key slash user slash home slash john. Permission denied. Oh, that's why. I have to edit the... Um, so if you notice the um, um, the uh, the pefs.db file, so it needs to be owned by John. And then that's it. And then so now we can pefs uh, del key slash user on John. So now it's completely encrypted. So now the system's encrypted. Uh, even as root, I can't see it. So let's go and check this out. Let's go back to John. Let's log in as him. And there you go. The files are completely unencrypted. And notice that while John's logged in as root, I can see the files too. Now watch what happens if I log out with John. The files are encrypted again. So when John logs in, it decrypts the home directory. And when John logs out, it re-encrypts it. So now we've got an encrypted home directory. Um, and so, so basically, that is how you um, you do encrypted home directory. So 
Now, that does not have to be uh, the home directory. You could have as many directories as you want that are encrypted with paths. And as long as they're mounted in FS tab and the key file is linked to the username, uh, it will actually unlock them as you log in. And you can do this for every user. Now, this is showing you how encrypted file systems work. Uh, and again, if you use PCBSD, this is all done for you automatically. You can choose whole disk encryption with ZFS or you can do per directory, uh, home directory encryption on top of ZFS. Uh, either or you can do that with PCBSD and they do a lot of this for you. But I thought it would be nice um, to show you how to have. So like this is, I mean, you could use this system as is. Your virtual memory is encrypted, your memory is encrypted in RAM, and your home directory is encrypted. So, uh, so you'd be good to go. Now, I caution you, don't encrypt your root directory because if the system needs to be recovered, you don't want to mess with that. Um, so that's pretty much, I mean, this system's ready to go. And the login manager works as well. So let me reboot this machine. Let's, let's go and turn on... Let's go and uh, turn on Slim again. And I'm gonna reboot this machine just for a good, uh, good habit. And I'm gonna see you when it reboots. Uh, I'm gonna resize the screen so you can see it. And the next video, we're gonna talk about building out a desktop with XFCE uh, and some of the other things you can do uh, with FreeBSD to make it a useful system. Uh, so uh, we'll be back in another video.